May 13th, 2024, closed session minutes. The city of Tai Town on May 13th, 2024, 8.09 p.m. entered closed session with a motion made by Councilmember Tillman with a second made by Councilmember Foster with all the elected body vote and I to discuss the appointment, employment, assignment, promotion, dis discipline, demotion, compensation, removal, resignation, or performance evaluation of appointees, employees, or, or officials over whom it has jurisdiction, or any other personnel matter that affects one or more specific individuals, and to consult with counsel to obtain legal advice. The topics discussed were employee compensation for specific individuals, pending and new litigation, performance review of management. Persons present at the closed session were Mil Mayor Miller, all council members noted above, the city manager, attorney Gullo, and clerk Coleman. Actions taken were as a motion by Foster to adjust salary of a specific employee to previous level due to the improper budget amendment made by the mayor to now require repayment of the salary which was improperly paid and to adjust upcoming proposed budget to ensure coming fiscal year salary level is at the previous level pre-January 2024 before the proposed organizational wide 6% increase is added there too. With a second by McCarran, carried three to two with, with Councilmember Tillman and Councilmember Cheney opposed. It was also noted that a budget amendment to address the appropriation of funds improperly paid will need to be prepared and passed as emergency legislation prior to the close of the fiscal year. Motion by Councilmember Tillman to nullify a social media agreement between the mayor and a particular employee. Second by Foster, carried five zero. Motion by Foster to excuse Mayor Miller from the remainder of the meeting at 940 with a second by Councilmember McCarran, due to the perceived conflict he may have in hearing the legal advice relating to the subject matter. Motion carried 5-0. Clerk Coleman excused herself from the meeting at 10, 10 p.m. Meeting adjourned by motion of Fo Councilmember Foster, seconded by Councilmember Tillman, carried 5-0 at 10, 45 p.m. All good, Jim? Sounds good. Review of the minutes of the May 8th, 2024, May 13th, 2024, and the May 13th, 18th, 2024 closed session minutes. Are there any comments, questions, concerns by council? No. Hearing none, proceeding down. Council member statement regarding conflicts of interest on agenda items. Any council members would like to make a statement regarding that? No. Hearing none, proceeding forward. Public comment pertaining to non agenda items. I got one thing. Yep. Mark Stevenson, 9 York Street. This is actually on behalf of my wife who chairs the Clean, Clean Green and Safe Committee for Tawny Town's Main Street. This is a prepared statement, so bear with me. I usually like to shoot off the cuff. I gotta read it. This past Saturday, we hosted the first in a long while, a Keep Tawny Town Beautiful Spring Cleanup. This event was registered as part of the Great American Cleanup in collaboration with Keep America Beautiful. This renewed partnership has the potential to not only benefit Tawny Town Main Street, but Tawny, Tawny Town as a whole, including parks and recs. We had 13 volunteers gather at City Hall in the City Hall parking lot at 9 a.m. Volunteers included the green, clean, and safe members of Main Street, members of the City Council, students and families from FSK, and Tawny Town residents at large, all ready to clean, weed, pick up trash, and plant flowers. By 11.30, we had gathered 350 pounds of litter and debris and recycled another 70 pounds of plastics and papers. Our largest projects included weeding and replanting along the fence in the City Hall parking lot, removing debris and cleaning at the corners of York and Baltimore streets and removing no less than 100 pounds of trash from the first 50 feet of the railroad tracks at Baltimore Street. As we, are, as we were wrapping up the event, we recognized we had extra flowers. A volunteer suggested taking them down to Tawny Town Police Department where the perennials from spring had died off. A team went down and planted what was remained but the project was bigger than, they had bigger than they had anticipated. So Clean Green and Safe Committee members, Natasha and her husband, owners of Cedar Hedge Farm, went back to work later that afternoon and completed those planters. We are still gathering the total count 
of flowers planted, which is something that the national organization wants to know. Afterwards, we all gathered at the Ryan Dollar Carriage House for a pizza and ice cream social. It was a great opportunity for everyone to get to know their neighbors a little bit better. I wanted to share this publicly to recognize the volunteers. I also wanted to recognize and thank Tawnytown Police Department for their cooperation in this community event. They added heightened traffic calming enforcement from the early hours leading up to the event and provided a dedicated unit in the downtown historic district for the duration of the event. This is what a Main Street organization is all about. This is collaboration. This is community building. I'm hoping that the public can join us on June 19th for our first community safety walk. This crosswalk, it's, it's safety, it's crosswalk safety campaign and a neighborhood safety walk sponsored by Main Street but conducted by the Tawny Town Police Department, will meet at 3.30 p.m. at the corner of Baumgartner and Baltimore at the crosswalk. The whole community is invited and the first 100 participants will receive a special safety gift. That's that. Thank you. Any further public comment pertains to non-agenda items? Hearing none, uh, Councilman McCarran, did you have something? Uh, I have, I have one announcement. Yep. Um, <clears throat> we have a very special announcement to make. One of our members has received a great honor. Ian Foster has been uh, selected as the recipient of the MML Lifetime Achievement Award this year. Each year, MML awards an individual somewhere in the state for um, meritorious service and contributions to their municipality and to the community at large. And um, we should be very proud of Diane for receiving this award. Uh, she has spent many years uh, working hard, not only for our town, but for all the, uh, all the surrounding areas and, and served on many committees <clears throat> with uh, MML and she represents, has represented us well and uh, we want to give her a round of applause for, for, for receiving this award and I guess it's the first time in in uh, our history that the Lifetime Recipient Award has come to Tawny Town. So congratulations, Diane. <laughs> Once more, any public comment pertains to non-agenda items. Hearing none, proceeding down. Resolution, ordinances and agreements. Approval, Catholic Charities lease. Comments, questions, concerns by council. This is just a continuation of what they've been doing? Correct. Any further comments, questions, concerns by council? No. Hearing none, proceeding down. Next up, we have introduction of Ordinance 05-2024, Fiscal Year 2023-2024, Budget Amendment 4. Questions, comments, concerns by Council? And Jim, just to put it out that this is the amendment in relation to the closed session action. Right from the closed session, yes. Yep. That's the only thing that's changed, right? Nothing else is. Yeah, that's the only thing happening here. Any further comments, questions, concerns by council? Proceeding forward, adoption ordinance 01-2024, fiscal year 2024-2025, operating budget. Questions, comments, concerns by council? Hearing none, I'm proceeding forward. Resolution 2024-09, water allocation for June. Questions, comments, concerns by council? Hearing none, I'm proceeding forward. City Manager report, Jim. Okay. Well, we have, uh, let's see, under capital equipment, uh, we'll be talking about the possibility of a street sweeper uh, farther down on the agenda, so we'll hold off on that one for right now. Uh, the capital improvement program, uh, 
we have have finished that up. It's uh, out there, as, as uh, Clara pointed out for you guys. Um, it's out in the, in the system for you to review. We haven't added any projects since you've last seen it. Uh, we just have the, the executive summary is in there now. And um, just uh, updated a couple dollar figures and, and um, like splits between water and sewer and streets. We tried to um, apportion that a little bit better across the different categories but the same projects are there as what we saw a couple months ago. Um, it's not on for approval tonight because it needs to go before the Planning Commission to give them an opportunity to comment on it before you pass it. So it'll be on next month's agenda, um, hopefully for adoption. Um, nothing new really on the Charter and Code. Um, after, after last month's Monday meeting, uh, we held off on making any changes related to the IT department that we had talked about during the workshop. Um, let's see, Roberts Mill Road, Broad Street reconstruction. I know the city attorney made mention, um, as I've shared with you guys before, that the uh, contractor has filed for bankruptcy. So that has certainly thrown a wrench into getting warranty work done on the project. So we do have some funds in retainage, but not enough to cover the full amount of the, um, the repairs that need to be done. Um, so the projects, um, both that and also we're seeing some failures on the um, portion of Fairground Avenue that we did the sewer rehabilitation project on. Um, so both of those were bonded, um, but unlike the letter of credit process of old, where we would just go down to the local bank and pull the letter of credit, this is more like filing a claim and it's a bit more drawn out. So <clears throat> Attorney Gullo is, is helping to work through that process with us. Was that DeLauder on, on the fairgrounds project also? Yes. All right, was it the same paving contractor on both projects? I'm not sure if they use the same subcontractor on both projects. Okay. Um, my understanding is that the paving contractor has not been paid in full. That's correct, on the Roberts Mill Road. On Roberts project. Mill Road. Yes. And now he has been paid at fairgrounds. Yes. Um, do you know if the amount that the subcontractor has not been paid plus the amount of the retainage is enough to cover the um, redo for Roberts Mill? I don't believe it will be. Okay. I don't think so. All right. Um, are we in touch with the bonding company? I assume that we've been going back and forth and um, are they aware? We have not made contact yet. We're, um, <clears throat> everything's been forwarded to the city attorney um, for him to kind of guide us through the process. But we have not made contact with them at this point. Yeah. Now I think um, Public Works is still uh, doing some information gathering and putting together all the support documentation for for the attorney. I've been in that seat. Uh, let's see, moving on, uh, the Riffles Lane storm drain, uh, we sent the easement plats and deeds of easement out to all the property owners. And um, at this point, waiting for folks to get them signed and notarized and back to us so that we can put the project out to bid and get that finally rolling. Uh, lastly, uh, the FY24 sewer rehabilitation. <clears throat> um, design work's ongoing. Um, we're, we're hoping to have 50% um, level drawings, which would be basically adequate to start the permit application process. So hopefully we'll have them in a couple weeks, well, about a week and a half. And uh, that is moving along right on target, right on the timeline that was planned. Uh, let's see. And just a, a quick clarification. Um, I know in, in your legal report, there was mention of, um, you know, failing pavement. And I just wanted to clarify that part of that is in the Fairground Avenue project. That's the um, area where it's settling over the replaced sewer line. So a little, little bit of a just clarification to... Um, okay, if, if in the settlement, that's not necessarily the paving guy's <coughs> fault. That's the water. That's the... Right. The contractor's fault, but the, yeah. the, 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 the Roberts Mill Road gravel on Roberts Mill, and it's right. much worse than, and I had even thought it would be that it's, yeah, because the, the amount of fines that are in the gutter pan is just ridiculous. Yeah, so that one, right, Roberts Mill is definitely a paving yeah. um, okay. issue. The other one is, right, compaction with the sub base and, and the lotters. Yeah, if you have any chance to check that one out. 
You should. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I didn't realize that we had that big a problem down there, so I'll ride down and take a look. Yeah, I, I actually made a point to get out and about today to take a look at, at Fairground Avenue. And, um, you know, there is uh, there are some pronounced, um, you know, dips, like kind of tire ruts, which really we shouldn't be seeing, you know, at this point. So um, something's definitely going on there. So we're working through that. And um, that's about it for my report, unless anybody has questions. Questions, comments, concerns by council? Um, Jim, you did mention, I think it was the last meeting, that we were going to look into doing a secondary bulk trash pickup this year. How do you? That's actually um, under new business. There's a yep. bulk trash discussion. Oh, didn't even see that. Yep. Is that the new, we'll one? Get, the new one? Okay. Get to that. Yep. Okay. Um, I have a couple <clears throat> of uh, questions. Um, Why do we have to have a discussion? I have brought up um, in some exchange of emails uh, regarding the charter amendment uh, uh, about making the uh, city attorney on par with the clerk and treasurer uh, in, in charter, since right now there is no mention of the attorney in charter. Um, that was a measure that seemed to have had some support, fairly broad support back in January, so I just would like to see that brought back. Okay. I will add that for the uh, list with the attorney when he's... Yeah, that's why, I mean, that's why it died, because at the time we didn't have uh, a yeah. uh, review. Okay. Um, the um, Main Street Subcommittee uh, Open Meetings Act issue. Yeah, that's also on the legal review list, but okay. it hasn't that's gotten fine. to the top of the pile yet. Um, all right. Um, let's see. I do have one other, I have another question. Um, uh, we have Dan working on a social media policy. Um, it seems to me that that's a communications issue, not a technical issue, and I wonder why we have Dan working on that. Um, to me, it's like telling, asking your mechanic to teach somebody how to drive a car. You know, you, just because he knows about the how okay. everything works doesn't necessarily. Okay. Um, yeah. It's it's largely because he knows um, a lot of the ins and outs of how everything does work. Um, and also the, um, that function, I guess, landed in IT when we first started um, to have Facebook pages. So that's just where, where it resides. And certainly the, uh, you know, I just don't he's, think he's Dan, not, you know, yeah, because he's yeah. not a communications professional. And he's not, he um, he's not working in, in a, you know, in isolation on it. Um, you know, and, and certainly we've had samples provided by MML, right. and, and you know he's researched. Well, that's what ones, I was doing. So we're cobbling together we're, from right. We're sources, cutting just, and pasting. I just, and, again, I just didn't yeah. think it was uh, um, right. not necessarily you know fair to drop over on him. Um, yeah. Uh, I see. I was looking at the the um, reports from the sewer treatment plant. Um, I love the trajectory. Uh, very excellent. Is there anything that we're doing in particular? We're at half of the state prescribed levels right now are we are we over treating or are we are we still monitoring that as we go trying to figure that out yeah we're we're being very attentive to to our dosing and um, trying to keep the numbers as low as we can so that if we do have some kind of failure as has been our our downfall um, for many years yeah. That we would rather be, you know, under to start with, so that if we do have a pump break or a valve go down and it takes a week to fix, and we miss permit, you know, we don't meet permit for that week, you know, we've got a little cushion yes. for that. So um, the the guys are trying to, you know, certainly costs are higher with the dosages that that we've been using, um, but. As I said, we're we're trying to keep the numbers under so that if we do have some equipment but, I mean, failure, they're doing a great job of keeping yeah. them under, and I just don't, you know, yeah. there's diminishing returns on that, as well, as you well know. I just want to. Yes. But I do want to congratulate them. Uh, you know, both charts are, are yep. looking excellent. Yes. Um, uh, in light of what happened with the, um, uh, with the ad that went out in, Carol Magazine, have we checked this QR code that we're sending out to make sure that this goes to the right place? 
I have not personally, but I will make sure that it's, um, well, it's, yeah. And that's all I have for now. Thank you. <clears throat> Further questions, comments, concerns by council regarding city manager report? Hearing none, proceeding down, department reports, questions, comments, concerns regarding that. Hearing none, proceeding to legal report. We do not have a city attorney with us here today. Jim, did you have any, anything to add on it at all? Um, no, just that clarification about the Fair, Fairground Avenue piece. Sounds good. Proceeding down, new business, monthly financial report, questions, comments, concerns by council. Hearing none, proceeding forward, accounts payables, questions, comments, concerns by council. Hearing none, proceeding forward, street sweeping discussion. Jim, do you want to lead us off on that? Okay, well, um, really the big question is, um, do we want to procure equipment and start providing that service in-house rather than contracting out? Um, even if we uh, continue on through the end of the contract with the current vendor, um, say their performance does improve, um, we could still, Public Works believes they have the capacity that if we had the equipment that they could do incorporate street sweeping into their weekly routines. So currently we only sweep the city roads once a year. So the state roads get swept once a month. If we did have equipment, we could sweep our own streets more frequently in addition to having the vendor do the state roads or if the performance doesn't improve and we get out of that contract, then we would take over doing the state roads as well. So in, in your packet last month, I know Public Works provided um, you know, a spec sheet for a street sweeper if we did want to move forward and, and acquire a piece of equipment. But I know that, that idea of doing it in-house versus you know, um, outsourcing it has been talked about off and on for a number of years. And, um, In, well, for many years, we've opted just to outsource it and let somebody else deal with the, um, you know, the maintenance of the equipment and so on. But again, we've had with some it, performance issues lately. The, um, oh. with, it, with it being in our control, essentially, it would allow us to have more of an impact over what kind of quality we're looking for out of the street sweeping. Talking with DBW, they seemed heavily in favor of that route of procuring our own. Um, they demoed the one that they're looking, that they're looking to get. And again, they had recept pretty positive feedback on it. So that's just, just to throw that to the out yeah. there. Yeah. You got Jim. I've been an advocate of, of uh, in-house street sweeping from the early days. <clears throat> that being said, the problem could be solved with the contractor if we simply adjust the hours. The, 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 timetable on which they perform their services is not conducive to providing a good job because um, as much as we want to get people off the street at a certain time on a certain day of the month it just doesn't happen it's not it's sporadic sometimes it's good sometimes it's not good you delay the schedule and have them come in at nine o'clock or whenever, whenever we decide, I don't know whether that's the magic number or not, when most of the people are at work, you get a lot better performance out of your contractor. And um, again, I'd like to, I'd like to see some, some hard numbers about what, what this is going to add to the cost wise to, to our overhead. And um, I think we could make a decision based based on that. I mean, but regardless, I think we need to adjust the the time when the contractor comes up. And you know, maybe the contractor wants to come up at five thirty in the morning. Well, that should be his call. That should be our call. So that's hey, Jim. That's just just for reference, I did have several people say when they did the demo out here it caused quite the backup. It was during the day, it was later in the day. 
and it did create a lot of issues with traffic. Now, if we have our own sweeper, he can do it whenever the heck he wants. Well, that's exactly right. And if it's, you know, if he's got a street that's open that normally isn't, then he can go then. But I think it's kind of hard to ask a, a contractor to, to get out there and create that much of, a, of an issue going up and down the street time-wise. Um, and apparently a lot of people were, were a little upset. Well, I, I will say I don't think the quality... I don't think the quality of the work is because cars are parked out there. I mean, as we've seen recently, some of it has been the actual machine was broken and they launched it anyways, and it came out here and actually just spread the mud all around the town. And that's, I think that's happened twice now. It isn't necessarily that the cars are parked there that's causing the quality issue. I don't think, or I don't think that's the issue here. I think it is the actual, why are we being sent broken machines to conduct the work? You know, there's days where they're calling out the day of, you know, can't, can't make it out, not gonna make it out. Um, I think it's a reliability well, it, it, and a quality be, issue. Probably the advantages of having our in-house equipment would be would outweigh any disadvantages. But yeah, so, I, I would I would think so. I, you so know, like I think that resolves resolves your issue really of of cars being parked in the way if they can come out and do it at at our own pace and schedule. Um, you know, and if there's spots that are missed um, because cars are in the way, then they can come back at some later point. And, and catch those areas. Um, I like the idea of being able to sweep our own streets more than once a year. Um, you know, I, I think that that could, uh, I think that that would garner a fair amount of support from the people all over town who would like to see that. Um, you know, or for special, be able to do it for special events and uh, anything like that, to sweep the park, um, any of those, you know, any of those things, I think. Agree the parking lots of the park. 100% agreement. So. No, and I think the additional attachments that yeah. come with them will benefit overall as well. Right. With the blower and the and the, the water. Yeah, and, and, and yeah, right, because with the leaves and stuff, especially in the mm -hmm. park. Um, yeah, and used in tandem with the uh, with the, the vac truck, you know, it could be very handy for, especially with this whole uh, copper lead pipe thing going on. Um, you know, we could be able to do our own test bidding and keep that all very contained. I think there was the contract up with the sweeper. Uh, not until 2025. So we have like a year from now. Yes. Yes. Yep. But if they're not doing it correctly, can we get out and of that's, that contract? Right. That's Would that's something that that again we're working with the city attorney yeah. on. I mean, it sounds like that. Public Works is on board, yeah. so I think that's the answer. Yeah. Well, somebody must have sent something to them because they even swept York Street while it was under construction. So that was. <laughs> <laughs> But I will say one of the things that, that, I, that I saw happen um, during the construction, and it had nothing to do with the construction, but I think a dump truck, maybe a grain truck or something, um, spilled a bunch of stuff on York Street, uh, and it was a Sunday morning. Uh, the state highway actually was out there with their own, with their own sweeper truck, with an MDOT sweeper truck, um, sweeping that mess up. And it's something that, you know, had that been something that was uh, not on the state road or something that was even a bit more of an emergency and the state couldn't get somebody out there, uh, we'd have the ability to do that. Yeah, and, and that's that's a very good point because right now when something like that happens, our guys are out there with brooms and shovels, mm -hmm. you know, trying to clean up stuff like that, you know, at, and, and oftentimes it's at an intersection with a, a city street and the state roads. So we're kind of right there, you know, on the shoulder trying to work with the traffic going by. Yeah. So. And, and just to, to kind of touch base, follow up on Judy's point, um, there's there's not a tremendous lull in midday traffic anymore no. around town, so I think the you know the street sweeper coming, you know around six you know five to six a.m. is is really to beat traffic, um, and you know just for that safety factor, so they're not you know holding up traffic, and you know if they wait and it, you know crossing the street here to go over to the annex, you know you it's it's always busy. So there's really not like a slow period around the city anymore like there used to be. So, I mean, we can certainly look at it, but I don't think that's, I, I think a, that's not can, a I, I think if we can make this, um, you know, fit into into the capital okay. budget, um, okay. I, I kind of think this yeah, is a no-brainer. Like yeah, All right. Much well, we will um, touch base with Legit, see what kind of, you know, increase to our costs there you know, to, to be yeah. operating this piece of equipment we're looking at. And, um, you know, we can move forward and get, get the rest of the facts we need to make a, a decision. Good. So, all right, thank you. Really
questions, comments, concerns by Council regarding street sweeping discussion? Yeah. Board to bulk trash discussion. Jim, did you have any points you wanted to lead off with or anything? Sure. I mean, I, I know the question came up about whether we should have go back to having more than one bulk trash event per year. Um, I know, you know, Public Works is, is of the opinion that that one certainly seems to be adequate. Uh, I got some some figures uh, for it from the last couple of years. So this year, and actually it's very timely, we just got the tipping fees today um, for the bulk trash event. Uh, so this year we did 32.2 tons for bulk trash day. Um, so that was um, about $2,000 um, in tipping fees. And, but in addition to that, we spent $4,440 with Ecology Services to have their staff and their trucks, their compactor trucks here. And um, we also had three roll-off containers for metal. And typically we fill two and it's part of a third. And this year we only filled one and a little bit of a second. Um, so that amount actually decreased a bit this year. But the previous year we had 33.1 tons, um, 0.01 tons. So it was a little bit, a little bit more than it was this year. Um, and let's see, the year before, 31 tons. Year before that, about 20 tons. So um, what, what Public Works tells me is that typically they are very busy down there for the first hour and a half or so, hour to hour and a half, and then they just kind of wait for more people to trickle in throughout the rest of the time period. Um, so how long are it, we, how long do we receive? Right, so we, right, so we do it from seven to one. And, um, you know, certainly I, I brought up the idea, well, maybe we would do, you know, shorter hours and do more than one event. And, um, you know, that's, that's doable, but then you're also having staff come in for just a couple hours. That's a little bit uh, harder to motivate people to come in and kind of give up their Saturday to, you know, just for a couple hours of work. Have we, but, have we ever done two before? Yeah. At any point? Yes, years ago we did, and we were seeing that the amount of, of what we were collecting was Second was one. was yeah it was very small. Joe, so, uh, so I mean, we I, obviously we do brush pickup when they call and ask. Okay. They do Christmas tree pickup one day in December. Is there a way that we can set up a program where people can call, and even if there's a small fee attached, ask for a pickup for some larger items that they just don't have a way to get it. Well, that's actually a service that our, our hauler, our, our solid waste hauler ecology services provides. They do do that. They yes. just have to call so, them. So basically, um, you contact them, send a photo of the item, and they will get back with, there is a charge for it, so right. they will get back with the property owner, you know, with the cost to come pick up that bulk item. I didn't um, know that. Very few people take advantage of that. Uh, you know, and, and perhaps that's because there is an additional cost and, and, um, well, and, and also you've got five surprised say, faces it's... sitting here. So I can imagine how many surprised is faces there are out there. Yeah. How Maybe. much is, do you know how much it is? So it, at all. It, it's, it's, it's case thing, by yeah. case. So, right. So it may be that, you know, folks may not want to pay, you know, $40 to get rid of a sofa. Right. You know, I, I, I don't have real world examples to give you. Um, because that's really between the hauler and the individual. Mm -hmm. um, so, but I don't think we get many uh, much I, activity on that. I do know also that you know on Facebook you often see, you know, on the on the community and neighborhood pages that there are some haulers out there who are trying to make little side money, mm -hmm. hauling stuff yes. away for people. So, yes. uh, you know, I was just asked the question, so I brought the question up. No was a perfectly acceptable answer if no was a right answer. Yeah. So I just was asking the question. It doesn't really seem like there's that much demand for it. You know, it, it, certainly it could be convenient for folks to have more than one opportunity um, a year, but. Is um, it an operation that could be scaled back at all? I know like the one down there, multiple dump trucks, everything like that, is there no way to scale it down for a smaller one? If we are just seeing a smaller number for the second one? I'd be hesitant to cut it back too much because we, we never really know quite what to expect and I'd rather be over-prepared than under-prepared. So 
you know, this, this time we had, I believe, six trucks. Um, some years, one of the trucks will have to um, run to the landfill and come back. <clears throat> this year, they didn't, they didn't have to do that. Um, but that seems to be, you know, at least during the, the peak time when people are lined up waiting, that seems to be a good number of, of vehicles to have to receive the trash. Um, without, you know, and, and the lines do get pretty long in the first hour or so. Do we have any statistics so. on what the, from the time period where we were doing two of them, what the tonnage was looking like on the second one? No, we've, we've been doing just one a year for a very long time. Okay. Yeah. Okay. We, we had cut it down to one once a year before um, Director Smeek came up to the office as the assistant director, so it's been, okay. been a long time. Been a very long time. Yeah. Okay. All right, well, oh, thank you for guess, thank you yeah. for at least for uh, looking into that for us. Yeah, sure. Any further questions, comments, concerns by council regarding bulk trash discussion? Hearing none, proceeding forward. Twenty town record discussion. Jim, do you want to lead off with any points? Well, there was a discussion at the this month's Main Street Advisory Board meeting about the Twenty Town record, and uh, I know Mayor Miller has you know, wanted to see what what Main Street was looking for as far as, um, you know, if there was a different look for the paper that they wanted than compared to the previous versions. I know we've kind of been trying to figure out if the 20 time record, you know, needs to be reimagined. And, you know, it's been quite a, quite a long hiatus at this point for it. And I would like to get some kind of print information back out into, uh, residents hands because while we push information with social media we've got the app we've got the website not everybody does that and um, you know there are folks who miss having that that hard copy bit of information you know is what's going on in the city uh, so I would like to get us to return to that and um, you know in discussion at the so when we when we put into our code, the Main Street Advisory Board, one thing that that group is supposed to be tasked with is coming up with the frequency of the publication of the Tawny Town Record, because historically it had been something of a fundraising activity for the Main Street organization. Now, if we factored in the city staff time to do that, it probably didn't really make any money, but it was a vehicle that we could promote downtown businesses and local businesses and things like that. And um, you know, some local businesses, I think, did see um, some some positive from advertising with it in it. Um, but in the uh, discussion with the Main Street Board, there were some different opinions on what the Tawny Town record was. And you know, over time, I suppose it's been perceived as you know as a newspaper rather than a newsletter and you know i think it's always been kind of a a city newsletter albeit beefed up a little bit with you know articles about local businesses and happenings and things that aren't specifically city sponsored um, so the question really is um, do we go back to publishing the record like we used to uh, main street certainly has their ideas about what it should be um, do we want to go to doing just a city newsletter like we did years and years ago and save money on postage and just mail that out? And if Main Street wants to do their own publication, they can do something you know, independent of the city office. Um, like to get your, your thoughts and direction on, you know, what, what should we get out to the public in, in hard copy? Well, I suffered through that meeting, watching it after the fact. And... I, I think there's a lot of misconception about what the newsletter was supposed to be. Like it was information about what was going on in the city and in the government. And it sounds like they would prefer to have some kind of publication that was completely separate. So I would say we still need to have that newsletter because there are a lot of people that have reached out to me and said, where is it and why haven't we gotten it? Um, you know, it, it's ridiculous to me that we should be expected to mail out the water uh, information when that was the whole point of that newsletter was to get that kind of information out. Um, I think Nancy kind of incorporated it into that Main Street thing 
um, because it was more convenient to do it that way and because it did incorporate the businesses and could give them the opportunity you know, to advertise through it. Um, if they don't want that, then that's fine, but we do still need to have the Tony Town record for what it was intentionally you know, created for be in the beginning um, for that information. And then, you know, if, if they want to do their own paper, then, or, you know, a, a paper magazine or whatever that may be, um, then that's fine because that's their prerogative. Um, but I feel like maybe, I don't know, I think there should be kind of, they should slow down just a little bit and start just finishing some of the other projects. I, I think that they... there's a, a misconception here because it wasn't that. Uh, there's, it, it's not that there's opposition to printing um, things about the city in the uh, newsletter. They no. very specifically said. They, that the no, city what they very specifically said was, on, quiet out there, please. What they very specifically said was, uh, they didn't want to have to rush out something, um, you know, in in a two week time frame with with nothing prepared and nothing started, uh, and put out a. a, a crappy newsletter just to satisfy the city's need to put the water report out. Well, I mean, the city can put the water report out and, and the Main Street Committee can work on figuring out exactly what the form and format should be. Um, it has in the past been pretty much the mayor's newsletter. Um, well, but there's a lot of other information. I mean, there's a lot there of other too. information in it, but in in the way, you know, the the the, the longest article in it was always um, uh, the mayor's uh, uh, the mayor's take. So, um, you know, I don't I don't think that there is opposition to carrying the city's news in. Um, there was, I mean, I watched the meeting. I saw it happen. I'm just saying. I, yeah, so like, did I. There was also, there's, you know, the articles that were in there were historically relevant to the town. David Bowie used to write articles all the time. You know, I'm not the, disagreeing. The right, and I'm you. just saying, so I feel like those are necessary things that need to happen. And I'm not saying it was even on the Main Street Committee to get it done, but that was kind of an agenda item for them. Like from the get go, it was this needs to be done. So if it didn't, that's fine, but we need to make sure that it gets done one way or the other is what I'm saying. If they don't want to, to, to have it be a city informative newsletter, then that's I, fine. That's enough. I will, I will say that they did have more than two weeks notice. I came at the end of April to their meeting at the end of April and I did tell them, hey, please start thinking of ideas that you'd like to see incorporated in the tiny, tiny town news or the tiny well, town that's, But that's different to, to coming to the meeting last Wednesday and saying, well, hey, we need to get this out because we've got to get the water report out. Well, then put your water report out and let, let well, the main street do what we were mail. trying that the idea and this is it was taken completely wrong the idea was to give main street a chance to put information in there about their events that are coming up about what they're working I'm not, on. no one's just it was it was a positive thing that main street could have used it for some reason they decided they didn't want to do anything with it and that it just shouldn't be it shouldn't be sent out i so i will say again they did have more than two weeks notice i, I don't know why the two weeks notice is i specifically was at the meeting in april and stood up here and Ask them to start thinking about what they'd like to see in it. And that's why I returned, or that's why I had uh, Economic Director Mish ask about it at this last meeting, was because I wanted to hear what the what they wanted to see out of it. And they, they know from, from their whole organization that they are supposed to be setting the tempo for the Main Street record. And I have emails going back to January asking, hey, we need a tempo on this so we can actually start getting it back out. Well, and, and, and the uh, promotion chair met with you uh, she put together a three-page proposal about it, and from my understanding, I don't even know if you've seen it. They suggest to turn it into a magazine. Maybe, and, and it, whether it's well, how it's printed and what it's printed on can still be something to be worked out. I will tell you to the Main Street Committee, it looked like somebody that that a uh, a date was sprung on them, and it was sprung on them in order to accommodate something that the city needed, and that did not sit well with them. I don't think that there is opposition to including city business in in the publication. It, that's I don't think that that's the question. I think that they they want to figure out what that publication is supposed to look like first. And I don't I, I think they feel like they haven't had that opportunity. Good. Now let me interject here. 
the Tony Town Record of old was a was a successful publication because not only did it include city information, but it also included information from the from the community at large. And I'm speaking of the two one seven eight seven zip code. It included uh, information from the churches, from caring and sharing, from the nonprofits, from Carroll County Food Sunday, stuff from the from the uh, uh, county that was important to us. And I think the bottom line is, I, I first of all, I agree that we're, we're watching that clip the other day, I agree that two weeks was unreasonable to expect to, to come up with some suggestions for a newsletter. And I understand that it was made the month before, suggestion was made the month before, don't have any problem with that. But I, I don't don't aggressive don't disagree one bit with the way the board reacted to that. But what needs to be done is as some as a diligent effort made to determine what they want this this vehicle to be. Now, there's a lot of options. We can we can print a church bullet and then type publication and mail it to everybody, and it'll end up in the circular file like all the other junk mail that comes in the front door. Or we can prepare something that somebody will actually look forward to read and pick up. We have a publication in nearby Emmitsburg that is circulated here in Tony Town that has very valuable content in it. Now, I'm not necessarily saying let's, let's do an Emmitsburg news journal format here, but why not? If that will serve the need, there's a lot of there's a lot of desires or a lot of there's a lot of input that Main Street wants to make sure happens when this newsletter starts. A discussion needs to be conducted about what those things are. These these are the these are the things that these are the drop dead points. These are the things that Main Street wants to accomplish, and then the city needs to say, well, these are the things that the city wants to accomplish. So you got city set of gold, you got Main Street set of gold, and they should be very compatible because Main Street's got to work with the city and the city's got to work with Main Street if we're gonna be successful. Now, what better way to accomplish that goal is to get a professional person that is publishing a newspaper to sit down with us and say, yeah, we can do that, or no, we can't do that, and then decide whether we put the burden on us or on our city staff to publish this paper, or we let a professional do it and accomplish the same thing. I think that that we're they're far away from being able to say by next by by the end of April or by the end of August, let's make sure we have a newsletter ready. I think we have to sit down and we've got to hash this thing out. We've got to put some bullet points down. We've got to decide what we want and how we want to accomplish it. And then once we get those figure invite somebody like Mike in and say, this is what we're trying to do. Can you help us? And Mike will say, well, I really can't do that. Or I can do this and I can't do that. And then decide whether it'll work for us. And I don't know why that, that, I mean, the burden of publishing this Tawny Town record was pretty significant, just like Jim said a minute ago. We, we you know, the revenue from the Tawny Town record benefited Main Street but at the cost of, of the employees' hours here in, in, the, in the city. So what did, we, what did we accomplish? We didn't accomplish anything. And it was always a, it was always a big deal. It was always took up a lot of time. Jim, just to check, have you got anything back from Economic Director Nish regarding, uh, I know we had somebody who previously put it together, the time to record, said, it says staff spending time on it. Has, yep. Have so, we got anything back on that? So the... Um, I mean, I can give a, a quick summary, a little historic information, I guess. Uh, it started out as a volunteer um, from Main Street. Uh, the Main Street Board talked about it, and there was someone on the Main Street Board at the time who was a freelance writer who was familiar with the, um, the layout software and everything, and that individual actually served as, I guess, the editor and publisher of, of the, the record. Um, after some time, um, 
you know, that was, I guess the hope was that that would have maybe helped that individual grow their freelance business also. Um, that didn't play out that way. So Main Street ended up paying that individual to continue on with, with the layout and, and you know, um, writing articles and editing and soliciting content and everything. Uh, eventually when that person moved on, um, Design Associates picked up the layout function and, um, and the economic development director spent a lot of time, you know, trying to sell advertisement and follow up with people on, you know, that didn't give us a print ready ad and trying to figure out what they wanted and then work on the billing for that. So it was a big time commitment to make that happen um, as well as, you know, calling people to remind them of the deadlines and, hey, I need that article by, oh, yesterday and, and so on. Um, so, so we went from it being volunteer to, you know, a paid Main Street person to the print shop on the square, um, getting paid to do the layout and then also printing it. Um, and, um, and then when economic development director Mishi came on board, he taught himself the layout software um, to be able to kind of take that part off of design associates' hands. And there, there had been some crit criticism about how articles were chopped up, you know, continued on this page and then continued on the next page. And, you know, and uh, that was something that the former, uh, I think, former administration wanted to kind of change up a little bit. So we brought the layout in-house. It was still printed by Design Associates. Um, so, and uh, over time, there was a lot of confusion about the advertising revenue and, you know, how much different size ads cost and things like that. So um, when Nancy McCormick retired, um, we kept it going for a few issues and uh, Design Associates really just kind of did, did all the service for us. Um, you know, except for the billing for the ad revenue, and we absorbed that in the finance office. Um, so, you know, that's kind of how it evolved. And then there was talk, I guess, with the current, you know, since the last election about, well, what do we, you know, what do we want the record to be? And um, at that point, we had realized that with the staff time and the postage cost, that it really was not, um, a revenue positive endeavor um, and and that sort of started this the downward spiral I guess of of it not being published so um, so that's kind of where we are so it, it is a lot of effort um, you know it has to do it in-house and do the full newspaper layout is very time-consuming um, so it not that we can't do it but it is a big commitment and it doesn't, it doesn't make, you know, it doesn't generate the revenue to offset the staff time, really. No. Um, Mike, you'll have an opportunity yeah, we'll have to speak in a few minutes if, on, during the public comment period. Um, yeah, I'm, I mean, like I said, I, I, don't, I don't know that there is the resistance that some people here think that there is to um, working with the city on this, but, the, you know, the, the uh, you know, there were some, logistical questions that came up on and I know that you said, you know, you, you were there at the April meeting and talked about, you know, wanting to get this information, but there was no deadline at that point in time. And this, what was sprung on them was this sudden two week deadline to get this out in order to satisfy the, uh, the water report requirement. Um, and that's, that's, I think what, what sprung most of the opposition. Uh, I think that they want to, um, get to a, something that may even be revenue positive or should at least be revenue neutral. Um, but that really requires some planning and it isn't something that you're going to do in two weeks. I mean, it wasn't even a rate card. There was no, uh, no sense of what all should go into it. Um, uh, and nobody was asking them to design the paper and do the paper. We we're just asking if there was content that they wanted to see in the paper. Well, that was, that wasn't how that is. As I watched that, that's not what I watched on from last Wednesday, but, um, you know, and I, you know, we should have that discussion. I'm no one saying that we shouldn't have that discussion. That discussion needs to happen, needs to go forward. It just hadn't happened in time to be able to put the paper, to try to put the paper out for first of July. So that's, I think that's where that stands. Is, 
while you're all pondering that, just a little tidbit, um, we are moving forward on getting the water quality report. Uh, the Department of the Environment finally gave their approval on it today. Uh, we've been pestering them for a while because they've had the information for weeks and weeks. Um, so we're finally ready to get that printed and folded. Um, we've ordered, you know, envelopes and got plenty of stamps ready to is go. It, how so many pages it's is be, it? How much, how much um, material is it, Jim? It's, um, it, it'll fit in a standard envelope. So I mean, is it like one well, eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper? Is um, it more than that? I, I think it's more like an 11 by 14 folded. Um, it's, it's got, um, got all the, um, all the lab testing and things for umpteen different, um, varieties of <laughs> call yeah, bacteria, yeah, all the, all the, the, all yeah. the things that we have to test for. Yes. Right. Um, so we're going to, um, combine that with the, uh, and, and in your public works report this month, there was a sample letter regarding the, um, lead and copper rule update where we are going to ask homeowners to do, um, basically self-reporting for the material of the water line as it enters their house. Um, so that letter is going to be combined with the water quality report so we can save on postage because we'd have to send that one out anyhow. Yeah. Um, and uh, speaking of postage, uh, looks like we would typically spend about $6,000 a year on mailing out the Tawny Time record. Okay. And, you know, and that's one of the, you know, when I had started to research, you know, uh, some of the expenditures, that was actually kind of one of the things I was trying to get to was mm -hmm. how much money are we actually spending on the record? And there really aren't the records to see what the record costs. So just my only concern is again, we're going to see a decent amount of city events that are just not going to be advertised over the summer through the Tawny Town record. Is are we able to get a consensus from council to go ahead and push forward a Tawny Town record to get out? I know Main Street doesn't want to see one get out, but realistically, we have stuff that needs to be advertised. I mean, can it just be like a can it just be like a one page right. newsletter? Yeah, even we can, a newsletter like, or something. That, that is certainly an option. I think that needs to happen. I think we owe it to the citizens of this town to tell them what's going on. Period. Right. And we can we can certainly do that even as an interim while we figure out the bigger question. You want a consensus or anything on that or um I would yeah, yeah, I would like I, that. And if, if you want to think about it a little bit for Monday night, that's absolutely fine. Um, as I said, we're moving. The thing that has the deadline is the water quality report, and that will be mailed out. That's that's a non-issue. So if we take that um, off the table, right, then the question that is, is, that is a separate issue. What can we do, and when can we start doing it so that we, right. you know, and, at this yeah. point, it's obviously too late for the wine festival or, you know, and a number of other things. But, I mean, those things are also being advertised in other ways, so it's not the yes. only source for those things. Right. And we can do, right, we can do the old style newsletter that we did years ago, you know, even as an interim. So at least we're getting something out while they figure out what they want to do. Anything interim should go, and it should go with it the water. It should go with the water. That way we do have the summer events being advertised as soon as we possibly can. Exactly. Well, I mean, well, that's, yeah. that's, that's something that we can do. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
update or replacement to the Veterans Memorial down at Memorial Park. Um, so just wanted to really have some discussion on, on that idea. Uh, you know, the existing memorial was, was recently spruced up a bit uh, in recent years. We did some repointing and pulled some overgrown trees out that the roots were starting to compromise the memorial. Um, so, you know, that exists, but a proposal was, was received, not a, a formal proposal, but a suggestion was received to do something bigger and better and I guess more modern um, and to do more in the way of um, recognition for what, what are we veterans. lacking? What what what? I I followed those correspondence, and I really never got the point of what was trying to be. Okay. What what are we going to do that we don't have now? Right, and that's that's really what we're here to talk about tonight. So the the email chain, you know, ended with the suggestion of well, let's put it on the agenda and talk about it. So here we are. Always good to honor the veterans. I, I'm all for that. Yeah. Are the, the, the brick walkway in front of the current memorial, are there are those memorial bricks in there or, or are those just no. is it just a straight brick there's, walkway? There's, so yeah. perhaps something like a like a, a small garden with memorial bricks and, and you know, we could sell the memorials to pay for the small garden and and um, you know, I, I like that idea. I think that's a, that's a, a good thing to do. And, um, and like I say, it freshens it up because I think that memorial, the brick memorial was built in the 1950s or early 60s, was it not? 50s, I believe. Yeah. So. But they um, did just redo like all the grouting. Yeah, just yeah you know, it, right. If you wanted to redo some walkways around it, maybe spruce <laughs> it up a little bit, well, uh, add some plaques and or I, something. I spoke with Lorena and she kind of has come up with an idea that, kind of made sense, which would add um, kind of what we consider a blank canvas behind where the current yeah. memorial is that would be kind of a sideways H walkway, but with two s additional brick walls that are very similar to what's already there, where people could then purchase the plaques of you know, maybe a particular platoon or, you know, a survivor or, or, or not, or however the case may be, whatever it is they're trying to. to yeah, I mean, I, I like the idea. Um, now, that being so. said, I think the, the monies involved when she got that was like $45,000. But this is Lorena, and she said she's, Try, she's going to reach out and she's going to try to do um, maybe donations and grants. And, and so it's still just a very I, big idea. It's just an idea. So it's not anything we're going to jump on right away, but this would give the opportunity to kind of continue on with, you know, just that idea of, of adding um, and people purchasing those, those plaques on their own. Um, yeah, I you think know, it's an idea worth honor. fleshing out. I like it, you know, and, and if, if it can, like say, it'd be revenue neutral in terms of selling, you know, selling, you know, oh, asking for donations, not no one used the word sell, right. um, but asking for donations for memorial bricks or memorial plaques, and that those funds would then go to creating the memorial uh, itself and maintaining it. I think that that's a great idea. Jim, as we're working on this, can you make sure staff are in contact with the local legion and BFW well, to make sure that we're also in contact with Lorena so, has started I, doing. I think part of the conversation also needs to be, you know, is is this a, you know, we've had one, I guess, maybe more, but, you know, I know there was, you know, one resident that start, kind of started the email chain. Um, and we, we have very little money available in parks and rec capital. So we've done a lot of projects in the last four or five years and we have not had growth in the last couple of years to replenish that park impact right. balance. So we are kind of scraping the bottom of the barrel here for funding for parks projects. Mm -hmm. And we still have a very aggressive capital program for parks with the Memorial Park expansion to build the, the additional playing fields yeah. um, and the the whole splash pad idea and yeah, you know, could that, could that's this one be linked the to CIP. the to the splash pad or the expansion of the park so that it could be? Um, I think that 
Any you use the energy of the new of those new facilities to, yeah, probably not. to inspire. Yeah, I don't know. I'm just I know, unfortunately, probably throwing that out there. They're very different um, things. Yeah. And so any grants yeah. that you get for one would probably not apply to, to the, the other. other. Oh, no, no. I'm, I'm, um, I'm talking about using the but, energy of, of the new facilities, and, and then, drawing people's attention, yeah. to, bring, to drawing their attention to wanting to contribute I, I to a memorial. If, if anybody like this. can figure it out, it would be Lorena. Um, so. But Again, the, she's, yeah, it's the, a very long-range project, I think, because yeah, we do the, have a and, lot. And but it's something, it's a conversation is, to look at and have. Is this, right, is this sure, something yeah, that the well, city yeah, wants to do as a city project, or do we want to partner with somebody, you know, if there is, say, a veterans organization that would like to take the lead on this and Even enhance better. the existing Even monument better. or add to it, you know, the city's role could be we have space available and we will cooperate and coordinate with you on this yeah but do we want city staff to be chasing grants and and reaching out looking this. into this and spending the time on this not really knowing what if if there's really and maybe that's where the discussion so, should start so i think see if i think maybe interested the discussion in needs that. to be you know is is a you know a local vfw or the american legion here in town you know or some other organization maybe who, yeah, you know that i'm not aware of interested in helping to sponsor yeah. something right. like this yeah i mean there's some very good solid veterans, veterans organization. organizations here in carroll county that i'm sure we could reach out to and and they would there's, i mean there's plenty of them out there that i'm sure would be one to help yeah. on a project like this i mean that's my biggest thing is you know a veterans organization is going to know what veterans want more than anybody else right um they should we should be definitely be partnering with somebody who is spearheading what this should look like and you know even the the idea of a more memorial brick program you know that that's a great way you know a lot of organizations have funded projects that way but there's a lot of administrative you know work to go on in with that and again you know our parks and rec department is one person so I'm I'm hesitant to say you know let's let's throw a project like this into the capital improvement program, right? Um, because frankly, it would be kind of I mean you've seen the parks page for capital improvement programs, so where would this land, you know, compared to all the things that the athletic associations want or the athletic association wants for their various sports programs, and um, you know other recreational things for our residents too, so. Again, you know, it's it's kind of a financial concern right now. Is, and I think that's what she's just looking for direction. Right. Like, right. What so, do we want? So, <laughs> so I right. think if she can reach out to those organizations and throw the idea at them. Yeah. Yeah, and see I if think anybody that's the first wants step. to take it on. Yeah. Okay. You know, we'd be well, well, okay. willing to welcome it if somebody wanted to lead to spearhead the the project. We will, we will do some outreach and. Um, you know, at the county level, they have a very, um, you know, active veteran um, program. So we can make contact there as well and see if there's any interest or uh, folks that they can put us in touch with that might be interested in a project like this. Okay, sounds so, good. Thank you. Okay, so we will seek out partners. Mm -hmm. Okay. Further questions, comments, concerns by council regarding veteran memorial discussion? Hearing none, proceeding down to approval of special event permit, Tiny Town Pride event, June 30th, 2024. Questions, comments, concerns by council? Or Jim, would you like to lead us off on that or anything? Um, this is just a, um, a, an event that somebody would like to hold at the park, um, just like uh, we have others like the uh, Woofstock and the concert that's, I, gosh, I'm drawing a blank on the concert name now. But, um, but it, you know, just yeah. a special event permit that you guys get to approve on Monday if you so choose. Yeah. I'd, I'd like to, to thank and congratulate Flint Events for stepping up. I know there was uh, a fair amount of chatter about this, uh, uh, both uh, in, through emails and also uh, uh, on the various Facebook pages. And so uh, I'm glad to see the Flint Events and, and uh, um, Parks and Rec stepping up on that. That's well, and I, that being said, it's not like a partnership. Like this is just an event. Okay. Like any other event. Where they're having it in our parks because it's it's important for the government to just completely stay out of divisive things that's no. yeah so all right 
Any further questions, comments, concerns by council regarding the approval of special event permit tonight on Pride event June 30th, 2024? Hearing none, I'm proceeding forward. Before we get to public comment pertaining to agenda items, I had one more thing I wanted to bring up under new business. I was talking with Jim about it today, or actually a little bit previously, was the city makes a $25,000 contribution to the Tawny Town Fire Department. We've been making that since before 2012. The number has never increased. If you adjusted that for inflation today, that number would be around 35,000. Before we go into the next fiscal year, I was wondering if council would entertain another $5,000 contribution for this fiscal year. For this fiscal year? For this ending, fiscal year. Then, yeah. And then next year when we get around to the same thing, kind of, you know, if there's money, extra money in the budget, that's oh, going to go into general yeah. fund anyways. Or if the council wants to go further, we could uh, match for inflation adjustment. I don't see any problem with I don't either. It. It's, I think it's the... Action needs to be taken incrementally. In other words, if we should vote it, vote on it each time we do it, rather than just have an automatic inflation in there. I think it should be done uh, by so, by, so by, you, by, you're, you're by, dollar, by dollar amount. Your question is: Should, should do, do we do we t um, on Monday want to approve a donation of X dollars? Yeah, my question is: There That's is right. there a general is council willing to entertain that on Monday if we bring Make the board in I yeah, if we if we have a, a, a few how dollars. Does, to send I mean, their how way. does that look for the budget? Right. If uh, if there's consensus to move forward, I'll work with the treasurer, and I'm sure in just kind of glancing over the financial report, um, I'm sure we have some categories where we have underspent for the mm -hmm. year. Okay. Um, so we could potentially even uh, incorporate something into the pending budget amendment for your approval Monday night. Um, but I would like to work with the treasurer on that to make sure that she's comfortable right. that, that we but have that. We but before we use that, that time, that, we want to make sure right. that there is yes. a general reception. I, I don't, I'm not opposed to that, no. Yeah. Jim, if you, or Anyone else? Jim, if you don't mind, just. Yep have staff kind of work on that for Monday right. and we're shooting for a five thousand dollars I think at different? this time yeah but can you also find out like as far as the county taking over um, a lot of the services and adding to the services of different parts of the departments um, in the long term how how is that going to affect the monies that each department is going to be getting from the county I know just speaking for the fire department there was a mm -hmm. they had their own budgetary concerns with the budget that was passed by the county and uh, again, we since 2012, you know, we've risen in population here. We build more houses. We have, I mean, you can tell the sirens. I mean, it's going <laughs> off consistently. You can tell they're working hard. And honestly, it's it's time for us to kind of bump that up just a little bit. Siren works very hard. <laughs> yep. Okay. Any additional will... questions, comments, concerns by council regarding that? Hearing none. Proceeding forward to public comment pertaining to agenda items. Some of you for the Mike, last like, you, seven uh, years. Uh, state your name and. Oh, Michael Hillman. I'm the editor of the Emmitsburg News Journal and the Woodsboro Walkersville News Journal. The reason I'm giving you this is for the Emmitsburg. There, there's two papers. Right. And, and what I'm, I'm sort of laughing at you, um, Mr. Mayor, is if you go to page seven of the Woodsboro Walkersville, you see the, water, the uh, Walkersville water report. We got that the day before we went to press. Mm -hmm. And you can see how it's laid out. So if you're looking for how, and for if you've got the Emmitsburg, you want to go to page 18, that's the Thermont Order Report. That's how much space it actually takes out to actually print it out. And that's the service we do for the towns. But the reason I'm here is I've made it clear I would love to do a Taney Town News Journal and something completely independent from the town, but would give you guys a newspaper. And I'm sitting here listening to your meeting tonight. I've already have seven stories. I've got, a, <laughs> I've got an assigned reporter who covers Taneytown. When the Woodsboro Walkersville Times went out of business, the next month we did the Woodsboro Walkersville News Journal. And when the Woodsboro Walkersville Times went out of business, they were 12 pages. We're now to 36 pages in the Walkersville newspaper getting ready to go to 40. I just helped Brunswick start up the Brunswick News Journal. So they're up and running. So there's three papers. It's, I've got the infrastructure. 
even though I'm not a newspaper man, I flunked English in college. <laughs> so it's a humorous story. But I have a staff of about 50 people that work for us. We have someone who lays the paper out. I've been willing to do it. My only problem is I don't want to come to do Tawny Town when you're giving out a free newspaper and giving out free advertising. There's no way for it to be viable. So if you decide, if you decide not to do a newspaper, I'd be glad to come in here and start a Tawny Town paper. Mayor, you'd have a column in the paper. We'd have the news that we've already had. We'll get the county. County said they'd already start submitting information. We could turn out a great paper for Tawny Town if that's something that you want to do. And I'm not asking you for financial benefit. I just so sort of like coming in and having a restaurant, wanting to start a restaurant, but the town has its own restaurant and it's giving away free food. No one's going to come in and do well, it. Sorry. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Ask I, a question. I would say I'm thankful for newspapers like yours because I do believe that's kind of the problem with the Tawny right. Town record is you shouldn't get news from your government. I'm, I'm, Yes. No offense, yeah. to yeah, that's right. no offense to government, but you shouldn't get news from your government. No, but you should have the right, as and the town council should have the yeah, right yeah. to submit without me editing yeah. what your positions are. That's why we have from the, the, the desk of, we have the, either, you go to Frank Davis in, in Emmitsburg, he submits an, an article. John, uh, John Kennard in Thurmont submits an article. Uh, uh, Heath Barnes in Woodsboro submits an article. I don't edit those articles. It's a chance as the elected officials to direct, speak directly to the residents without going through me. We try to do the news stories. Jim will tell you that when we do the, a lot of the 20 town stories, I send them to Jim because once it gets printed, if it's wrong, it hurts. So I usually send it to Jim, you know, and I said, did I get the facts right? I try to stay out of politics. I just believe in a small town community paper. Like you said, I like to have something physically in my hand. There's a lot of content that we have in the other papers, like the astronomy column, the almanac column. We got the Master Gardener column of Carroll County said they would submit an article to us. There's lots of community groups. The Lions Club said they would submit articles to us. We could make this a really nice 20 town newspaper. And I could have overlaps because Harrington's would maybe want to carry, carry their ad over here. That's how I would make the paper work. So both those papers are making money. Just a question, does your paper go out to every doorstep? Or yes, 100%. Okay, just making sure. So in, in Emmitsburg, it goes, the, the Emmitsburg News Journal goes to 12,000 people, goes to Carroll County, Fair, Fairfield, everyone in Emmitsburg and everyone in Thurmont. The Woodsboro Walkersville goes to everyone in Walkersville, everyone in Woodsboro, everyone in Keymar, all the way over to Kriegerstown. And, uh, and we're getting ready to, to expand over to Union Bridge. Mike, so, so the paper for you would go to everyone. How is it delivered? Once a month. How is it delivered? Physically? Use post office. Okay. The post office. So you do, it, it does go out. I bring it to I you. If you see me, I drop the, the, I drop papers like for the ones that go to Harney. I tr physically drive in my pickup truck to the Tony Town Post Office, and I give them a thousand copies of the paper, and they distribute it. It's the only way to make the paper work. People need to be able to open a mailbox and pull it out. It's not like the merchandise or like it's thrown at the bottom. It it's, works that way. There's, everyone gets it, and that's what makes advertising so good because I can turn around and say everyone gets the paper, and it works. See, see, that's the key right there. You get what you pay for. In a home-generated newspaper slash newsletter, if we solicit advertisements, you're going to be asking business people to either pay for an ad or We'll give you one free, like, like we got, like we had before. The problem is, you get what you pay for. If you get a free ad, you get that many results. The the the, whole, the purpose though of of Main Street publishing it was that the businesses within the Main Street boundary, um, they're the ones that got the free advertising as part of. They got an ad of such a of a certain size. That's that's and true. and everybody else had to pay for an ad, and that's what paid for the paper to be put out was my, my the paid point, advertising that came in. My point is, if you're going to pay for an ad, it's got to yield results. As a small businessman, I've been in this newspaper for I don't know how many years. Years. Many years. Every month, and I've also been in the Catoctin Banner. I'm no longer in the conducted manner because I never got any results. But I get results for this paper. And it's, it's just, my, I don't have a big advertising budget. Every, every dollar I spend on advertising, I got to take out of my own pocket to do it. 
I mean, you, you, all I can say is we put a lot of time and effort into producing a quality paper and nothing goes out. And we haven't missed our deadline. We always go out the first of the month. And if you had been doing this, I would have been on Jim's butt three weeks ago asking him where the water report was <laughs> and knowing already that there would have been a spot in the paper for the water report. The goal is to produce a paper that people want to pick up. I was in a dentist office the other day and an, and an elderly man looked at me and said, you know, your paper has too much news in it. <laughs> and I laughed at him and he, then he smiled and he goes, it's great. I, I have it all the time. I went to Frederick Kitchens and Bass in, in Walkersville and the guy came raining to me because I dropped off his invoice. And I drop off the invoices myself. And I, and I, and I, I was, usually when someone comes running to you, it's usually bad news they don't want to advertise anymore. And he stopped me, shook my hand and goes, I just got a $100,000 kitchen job because of your ad. I'm going to be with you for five years. But that's because the paper, we focus on really good stuff. Really, really. I'm going home doing the 100 years ago today, tonight. I spent five days doing 100 years ago. And most of it's about 20 town because I've taken it out of the 20 town, turning town record or turning the Carroll County record. And I'm reading about like the whole, if you read last June's, we had a whole thing in May about decoration day. The decoration day articles written by the Mount students was motivated because of a story of, of the 1924 about 20 town and their decoration day efforts. And that motivated me to take, to, to focus my Mount students two full pages on decoration day. This is a great little town and it deserves a great little paper. And if you want to do it, I'm not asking you to do it tonight, but at least consider the option of letting me do a paper. I appreciate so it. I Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. Further public comment pertaining to agenda items. Mark Stevenson, 9 York Street. Two things. First, uh, the street sweeping. Buy the truck, man. Buy the truck. All right. The contract, we live on York Street, main drag. It's terrible. All right. What's the point of coming out on Monday sporadically when trash day is Wednesday and downtown looks like crap all weekend? All right. If we have our own vehicle, I mean, I don't know what they cost, $160,000, $200,000, maybe more. You know, if we can do it when we need to do it, special events, Whatever, we have that option, all right? Year over year, cost effectiveness is, is there. Buy the truck, okay? Buy the truck. Second of all, Tony Town Record. I came here prepared to fight for Main Street's right to keep control of that paper because they are the ones that have the right based on all the codes and the control and all those things. The record falls under Main Street, okay? But an administration ago, it got took over by government, okay? Been it has been sporadically printed, maybe twice in two and a half years, all right? Now, I'll be honest with you. I've been conflicted in myself because I know what Mike does, all right, and, I eat, and they have a good paper. They've been eating our lunch, <laughs> eating our lunch. But I'm also a businessman, and the fact of the matter is this. This body, the council and the mayor's office, is conflicted about what the role of Main Street really is and how independent they are and what they're actually supposed to be producing and the collaboration between city government and independent civic organization. All right, it's too much cloudiness, too much cloudiness. All right, I'm not gonna get into the details of budgets that I've seen and finances that I've seen that don't add up. All right, but here's what we'll say about the Tony Town record. Free market wins, free market wins, okay? There's nobody set up right now to independently take on the Tony Town record. Forget the Tony Town record, just anyone in Tony Town gonna print a paper, 
okay? Mike's already doing it, okay? Government cannot. Government is no good at. Government has no business dictating news that goes out to a community, all right? You could have every, the Tony Town record as it is right now or used to be, it was good. It was good enough. It had government, it had civic, it had churches, it had all those elements, but it could be better, okay? A free market solution might be the only way to do it. Mike's got no competition. He can go for it, all right? And I'm not saying that he shouldn't because he does put out a good publication, all right? What I'm saying to you guys is either we're going to do it or we're not going to do it. And if we're not going to do it, and this Mike's pitch shouldn't have been to you. It should have been to Main Street. And if they don't want to do it, okay, let them have at it, all right? You guys, look, and this isn't personal. It's never personal. This is, it is what it is. But this control factor that is evident in this town about all of this thing, we got to control the police department, we've got to control DPW, we've got to control this, we've got to control that. It doesn't work. It hasn't worked. All right, you got all kinds of diversity moving in here that's way outgrowing the old ways of doing things. All right? This town is changing. The change is not coming, it's here. It's here, all right? There's probably been more people in the last two years that have stood up in opposition to what's been going on because they're used to a different way, a better way. I understand, I understand the past need to maybe control how quickly we changed all the great things about our small town and this and that. Look out the window, man. It looks like crap. It looks like crap. People putting hundreds of thousands of dollars a year in this town with nothing to show for it because we can't get the basics right. Let go. Let go of the control and let the people that know how to do it, the organizations that know how to do it, the free market that knows how to do it, let them do it. Nobody cares about who gets the credit. We all benefit from the growth. All of us, as citizens, as a town, businesses, whatever. It doesn't matter who gets the credit. Just let it happen for everyone. Thank you. Public comment pertaining to agenda items. <laughs> Hello, good evening. Boy, I'm not even gonna keep y'all here all day, but my name is Kenyatta Brooks, and I can officially say that I'm at 52 East Baltimore Street at Tony Town Community Partners. So I'm a little conflicted because I'm speaking as a citizen today, um, and I live at 111 Epsicon Court. The first thing I wanted to talk about is a street sweeper. I know we discussed that once before here in council a few times or not, but what I did hear was in reference to if we took it over, whether you would need new, a new job posting or not, a new um, salary for someone, or would that be stay in house? You don't have to answer the question because you guys don't answer questions. But what I do want to say is I'm thinking and I'm hoping that it does create another position for someone which goes back to my question that I wanted to ask earlier, but I, I missed my opportunity. When we do have public positions available, are they transparent? Are they on our websites? If they're not, they should be. I don't see any of the information on the city's website. I do see a lot of things like for volunteers and things like that for Help Wanted, but nothing for a salary position in the city. Um, we are a diverse community. As of now, I'm happy to say that. And our city government is not diverse. I like to see that. So the question again is, when we have our job postings, are they gonna be on the city pub website? Bulk trash, um, they do call, we are able to call, but I don't think people know that you can call down to 
the people that pick up the trash. I've done it several times, but that could be something in your paper because people don't usually know that. Just wanted to say that. Um, the 20 town record, this guy has said it all. <laughs> so I really have nothing more to say. Both of these guys have said it, but I can tell you, I miss it. I read it with my children. We look at it. We see the things that are going on in the community and we haven't had it in so long and we do miss it. In regards to whether we up and down of what it's gonna be a magazine, it's gonna be this, gonna be that, at the end of the day, the record at least needs to go back out unless this guy here, Mike, um, can produce something quicker. Rather than us voting, something needs to be out. And that's not gonna be one page, sort of time time record. Why can't we just re who produced the record? Is that something that someone could answer? Whoever produced it, why can't we just go back to producing it until, it's been two years, we haven't had any information. We need that. I, I, I enjoyed it. I really enjoyed reading the paper. Um, and that's really all I have to say. Buy the truck. Buy the flipping truck. I agree. <laughs> Buy the truck. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Additional public comment pertaining to agenda items? I'll just see here in front of me go. I'm not going to be positive. <laughs> I'm going to be positive, actually. <laughs> um, couple of quick hits. Uh, street Sweeper, yes, please. <laughs> Name and address, please. Harry Mead, Baumgartner Avenue. Uh, bulk trash, uh, yeah, in lieu of the second one, we probably ought to advertise that, and, like, yeah. that you can call and who to call, because I honestly had never heard that before in my life. And barely know because I can look on my uh, my ring camera who the trash company actually is. <laughs> so uh, so for Make sure the so get I think if you got that information out uh, that that's available, I think that would negate really a, a second bulk trash day need. Um, yeah, everybody else is going off on the record. Yes, I think we should have it, and I hope that we involve more than just Main Street because. It needs to be, it, 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 there's a lot more to Tawny Town. Um, and on the memorial thing, heck yeah, I'd buy a brick or a plaque for dad in, in a minute. So if, uh, if we wanted to do that, I'd be, I'd be all in. Thank you. Yep. Public comment pertaining to agenda items? <laughs> See, I can be positive. There you go. Appreciate that. <laughs> Jim Parker. Um, 20 Town Volunteer Fire Company, I'm the treasurer. I want to thank you in advance for your consideration, for your support. We, uh, we appreciate that greatly. Uh, starting next week is our carnival, one of our largest fundraiser. And we'd like to have all the support we can get. To answer maybe Judy's question is, we do get county support. They help to support us on our operating Cost. funds. Okay. Our capital, is thanks to your donations and the public, we have a $900,000 engine on order. That's all through donations and the support from our fundraisers. So we appreciate that. Again, thank you in advance. Thank you. Thank you. Additional public comment pertaining to agenda items? Go in once, go on twice. Oh. Give me one moment. Yeah. I gotta find my closed session stuff. Mm -hmm. oh, I'm going to read a presiding officer's closing statement for the closed session, and I'll be asking for an adjournment to go into closed session. Give me one second. Yeah. Let, me, let me read off the statement real quick. Right? Actually, Mr. Mayor, if you don't mind, I could um, maybe address one or two of the public comments. Yeah, that's fine. Be okay. Um, sure. Just uh, with regard to the, um, the, the help wanted posting on, on the city's website, uh, there's a yellow banner across the top of the page, and one of the things there is help wanted. So you can click on that. Yeah, and um, Right, but it, it's not a job so we, that means we no went, we, <laughs> actually, we kind of went back and forth on that because it never used to be a banner item. We used to only have it up there when we had positions open. So right now, there may not be any positions open. 
Um, so, but the help wanted is always there, and when we do have open positions, they go out there and they also get posted in the message board out on the front of the building. So they also go; out, they get posted on Facebook as well. I've seen them posted from the right. Tom page. So. When we do have an open position, it's always on the website. Thank you. So. Yeah. Did you was any others? Um, and uh, no, that'll that'll do it. I was trying to find another one, but didn't find it quickly enough. So all good. I am going to start on this presiding officer statement on June fifth, twenty twenty four, in accordance to the Maryland Open Meetings Act, Title Ten, Governmental Procedures, Subtitle Five, Meetings Section Three Dash Three Hundred Five B. This meeting will be closed as closed only to discuss the appointment, employment, assignment, promotion, discipline, demotion, compensation, removal, resignation, or performance evaluation of appointees, employees, or officials over, over whom it has jurisdiction, or any other personal matter that affects one or more specific individuals. The following are items that are going to be discussed. Citation 3-305 B1III, topic employee salary increases to discuss specific employee compensation matters. <coughs> I am looking for a motion to adjourn into closed session with a 10 minute recess. I'll second the motion. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed, we are adjourned. Thank you everybody.